Hi guys, this is Tamika, and this is my cognitive learning and motivation presentation for learning frameworks. First, we'll start off by doing our definitions. Cognitive, of or relating to the mental processing of perception, memory, judgment, and reasoning as contrasted with emotional and volish, volitional, I think I said that right, volitional process. Learning, the modification of behavior through practice, training, or experience. And next we have motivation, psychological forces that determine the direction of a person's level of effort and a person's level of persistence in the face of obstacles. As I'm getting older, I have a hard time remembering information for a test and everyday life. So um, I chose memory and study. Uh, it has affected my learning. So that's the one I chose. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna explain the topics. What role does cognition play? A key role of co cognition is remembering. This affects me a lot because it's hard for me to remember, it causes me to be cognitive impaired. How does this affect my learning, you say? Without memory, it's hard to obtain the knowledge that you have learned. And how does this affect my motivation? Motivation can be rewarding in this situation. It can encourage you, even though your memory is not 100%. As you can see, that's my uh, visual on the side of that. That's cognitive and the motivation and that's learning um, all going together to help. I chose to analyze sociocultural dimension. Cultural back background affects the way individuals perceive and process information. Different cultures have different values, beliefs, and attitudes that shape how people view the world. How do different societies or culture have different views? Well, in learning, Japan, in learning in Japan, parents take teachers out. They say it helps build stronger relationships. In Wales, loosening playground re regulation. It's um, said to, it's believed to help students be independent. In the UK, students who wear slippers have better grades. So it is believed, well, studies show that comfort level increases the attention span. And in Finland and Sweden, calling teachers by their first name, I don't think that will fly in the US, but it says to create a stronger bond with students. And in Korea and Japan, they also they nap during napping during school is encouraged. They say napping is proven to improve mental health and academic achievements. And in Denmark, uh, they highly encourage coffee and tea breaks during class. It says it impacts learning and memory. It keeps the brain young and enhances cognitive performance. The personal social effect had on me was motivation with going back to school. Society as a whole has been very positive concerning higher education and uplifting each other in various ways. And these are my reference um, that I got my information. It's my reference list. And thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy.